Hi guys, today I have with me problem 3.21 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. A man stands on the roof of a 15 meter tall building and throws a rock with a speed of 30 meters per second at an angle of 33 degrees above the horizontal. Ignore air resistance, calculate A, the maximum height above the roof that the rock reaches, B, the speed of the rock right, uh, sorry, the speed of the rock just before it strikes the ground, and C, the horizontal range from the base of the building to the point where the rock strikes the ground. Okay, so to start off this problem, let's draw ourselves a little picture. So we know that this building is 15 meters above the ground. So we can draw that right here. And that's 15 meters. And then we know that this rock is thrown 30 degrees, sorry, 33 degrees above the horizontal at 30 meters per second. So this is 33 degrees, and that's V is equal to 30 meters per second. And we know that this goes in some sort of projectile. And we want to find A, the maximum height above the roof, the rock reaches. So if this was the maximum height, we just want um, what it is you know, from here. So I'm just going to draw that in a different color so we can keep that in mind. There we go. Okay. So we also want the horizontal range from the base of the building to the point where the rock reaches the house or the ground. So that's the horizontal range. And then we also want to know what this VF is going to be when the rock reaches the ground. OK, so maybe let's just write down everything that we know, like we usually do. So we know that, again, there's going to be a Y component, right? So it's going to be moving upwards all the way downwards. And it's also going to be moving sideways, horizontally. So let's write that down. So for y, we have vi is equal to 30 sine 33, right? Because we're just looking for this component right here, meters per second. And then we know that vf, if we want to find, okay, yeah. Well, in this first component, if we want to find the maximum height, remember how we said in our past videos that v i that v v at the top is always equal to zero, zero meters per second, right? So right when it's like going all the way up and then changing direction, right before it changes its direction, it's actually zero meters per second. And so we're going to say v f is equal to zero meters per second. And then we know that acceleration, as long as we're on planet Earth, it's going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're just trying to find out what D is, right? So what's D? That's what we're looking for in part A. So we can even just call this D1. So if we want to call this D1 right over here, that's what we're looking for. And OK, so let's do that. Okay, so let's do that. If we want to find out D1, what we can do is we have our three knowns and we just have our one unknown, right? So what we can do is um, use one of the five kinematic equations. And the one that comes to mind for me is Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2ad. And here, if we isolate for that, and plug in our values, we get D is equal to 13.62 meters. So that means that this goes D1, this rock goes all the way um, 
13.62 meters above the top of the building. And yeah, that's our, that's our vertical distance. That's our answer for part A. So part A, I'm just gonna write that in red. Or actually we can just, we can just write that in red. So it's 13.62 meters. Okay, and then another thing we can do is for part, so sorry, not another thing we can do. So now moving on to part B, the speed of the rock right before it hits the ground. That's what we're looking for. So we wanna know what VF is right over here. So one thing is that we don't have to do this whole, there's two ways to go about this. We can solve for this and then solve for this motion or we can just solve it in one go. We just have to take the VI from here and we're solving the VF from here. And we know that, um, we know what distance we're traveling, right? So let's write down all of our knowns. So for, so for part B, We're gonna have our VI, which is again, the same VI as before. It's going to be 30 sine 33 meters per second. And we don't know what our VF is, right? We have no idea. That's what we're solving for. But we know that we are moving negative 15 meters downwards because we're going from the top of the building all the way to the bottom, which is negative 15 meters. And we also know that we have acceleration, which is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And yeah, there we go. So that's where we have our, that's where we have our, um, now we have our VI, we have our D and we have our A. So now we're just solving for VF because that's what we wanna find. That's what's in the question. And we can use one of our five kinematic equations again. So we can do VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. Okay, so VF squared, we have no idea what that is, but VI squared, we plug that in, we do 30 sine 33 squared plus two times minus 15 times minus 9.8. And we're just going to square root that to get our VF and VF, I get as 23.68 meters per second. Now that's for the Y component, right? So we just solve for V I Y, oh, sorry, V F Y, but that, that was also V I Y. But remember that because we're in projectile motion, because we have two dimensional motion, not only do we have this Y component going downwards, but we also have this X component that's going sideways, right? So we also have to account for that X component. And we know that if this is VIY, v, VIX is equal to VFX is just equal to, you know, VX. At any point in this entire projectile motion, we know that the X component does not change. Um, we know that because there's no acceleration in the X direction, it's just going to be, you know, VX one speed and that is 33 cos sorry 30 cos 33 and yes yeah, so we have 30 cos 33 so that's what we have so now what we have to do is we have to um remember that this is in both components right so we have this component right here which is 30 cos 33 and we have this downwards component, 23.68. And so now to get the speed, what we have to do is Pythagorean theorem and we have to get this component. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna do this. We're gonna do 30 cos, or actually, sorry, I should write down the equation first just for completeness. So it's going to be VF squared is equal to VFX squared plus V, um, f y squared. So v f is equal to square root of v f x squared plus v f y squared. And from that, we're getting 
um, if we just plug in our numbers, right? So if we plug in 30 cos 33 and 23.68, the VF we're getting when I plug it into my calculator is 34.55 meters per second. So that's our um, final speed. That is the speed of the rock right before it strikes the ground. Okay, and now for part C. Okay, so now for part C, what's the horizontal range of the building? A horizontal range, yeah, from the base of the building to the point where the rock um, strikes the ground. So if we want to find out what this distance is, let's write down our knowns again. So actually before we write our knowns, let's just recall that if we want to get the horizontal um, distance, right, dx, it's going to be Vx times T. Now, this is what we're trying to find out. We already have this, right? Because we just um, talked about it in part B and we don't exactly know how much time it is, but we do know that it's dependent on the Y, right? Because something can only travel as far horizontally as long as it is in the air, right? So if it travels in the air for one second, it's only gonna travel horizontally for one second, right? It's impossible for any other situation. So we wanna find out what T is, but um, we don't know. So we don't know what T is. We do know what Vx is, and we said it was 30 cos 33 meters per second. And we know that it's D, so we know that this distance, if we wanna find out what T is, we have to solve for our Y, right? So for our Y, we know that our VI is equal to 30 sine 33. We know that our distance is minus 15 meters, right, in the Y direction. And then we also know that our acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And um, yeah, that's what we have. So what we're trying to find out is what's T. So again, we have to use our five kinematic equations. So we have VF is equal to VI plus AT. So for that, we get 23.68 is equal to 30 sine 33 plus minus 9.8 times time. And for time, I'm getting 4.08358 seconds. So when I solve for this, that's what I get. And when I get that time, all we have to do now is plug it, plug it back into the equation that we have right here, dx is equal to vx times t. And when I do that, 30 cos 33, right from right here, times 4.08358 seconds. I get 102.74 meters and I get 103 meters. So that's how far horizontally it travels. Um, so that's your solution for this question. I know the format of this video was a little bit different. So if you prefer it one way or the other, um, you know, compared to my other videos, just let me know. You can send me an email or write something in the comments. Um, yeah, so I hope this was really helpful. And please, if this was helpful, um, if you don't mind, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That way I can just see, you know, what people like because I can see the statistics, um, especially for like, you know, if you guys like something more, I can try to do more similar problems towards that. And I can kind of gauge my videos depending on what you guys like. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.